Now this is Hollywood Unlocked. Yo, it's Hollywood Unlocked Uncensored. I'm Jason Lee. And I'm Melissa Ford, a.k.a. The Curve Queen. Yeah, it was damn. Let's get it started. Okay, so somehow we have an international superstar, Jason Derulo, in the building. In the building. Yep. Okay, so I just have to say, okay, and I and I know that this is going to come across so crazy, but people have to understand, like, Jason's a friend of mine. I, I have known Jason for a long time. But you know, you made me think of going back to this passion that I had. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to want to develop this app that I just abandoned because I started Hollywood Unlocked. I'm so mm -hmm. busy. I wanted to create an app that when somebody walked in a room with like a large penis, that the whole that the person would turn a certain <laughs> color. We haven't had a guest in here, you know, at least before the show that we knew. Wait, I'm sorry. Back up. You want a you know you slept <laughs> with a guy who's had a small penis. Oh yeah, unfortunately. Right, but if he walked in the room and he turned yellow. And so I know automatically he had a small penis. Like, oh not, fuck yeah! You're not getting this vagina, <laughs> right? <laughs> that would be amazing. So if, uh. you, if you create that app, the men would need a certain <laughs> app as well because you know it's it's really rough to walk into a room and think you got a diamond and she just start taking the eyelashes off. <laughs> Taking the nails off. Yeah, but, oh, but, you know what, uh, what is that? And then letting the stomach out. Like, like an x ray. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, we need yeah, there we go. As well, well, because, look, you know, thank you, Jason. T even the girl, the girl situation <laughs> is crazy. Turn this around. Melissa because was... you, you thought she had a slim waist and then it just all came out. Melissa <laughs> would still turn green. Her eyelashes just fell off a minute ago. They did. She's great. <laughs> but no, I do agree. I think it needs to be a universal thing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you absolutely. know, because I'm still learning the land of labia, right? I didn't even understand that the vaginas be different. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? Like, I know they're different because clearly I watch porn. I'm sorry that this is a different type <laughs> so of So you do watch straight porn? I watch porn. Just whatever. Yeah, he watches but, straight porn. Get, let's, this conversation. Let, 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 no. Let's move past. It's not about me. It's about Jason. Okay. <laughs> and the point is, is that the conversations, because we were kind of joking yesterday, that like, you can have certain conversations mm -hmm. about men, mm -hmm. about us, yeah. that are permissible these days. And, like, women, you can't. But I do agree it should be a universal app that should apply to everybody. But you were talking about vaginas two seconds ago. Right. So basically in saying that this app that I said, when Jason walked in the room and right. he was glowing green, yeah. everybody would That's know That's hilarious. It, it should, he, he was suggesting, I agree, it should apply to all. Right. So, like, if you were to come in the room and we knew, like, if your lashes and everything just mm -hmm. kind of fell apart, yeah. would you still be green? You would be green. I'd definitely be green, we, I, if I do say so myself. But we know some people that would be red. Yeah, we do. Okay. Straight up. Yeah. Anyway, I didn't know a way to bring your penis into the conversation. <laughs> that was my attempt. <laughs> you know, you're, you're, we were talking about just your branding. You've been so precise and so good at building, I think, like the perfect brand. You know, you are packaged very well. No pun intended. I mean, like how you create your content. You sell out arenas. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's some people struggling to sell out the Palladium, but you got the whole arena thing going. And then, you know, uh, your penis pops up on Instagram, and now that's all our people want to hear when we post you on Instagram. What do you think about that? Um, I mean, it is what it is. You know, I mean, I don't. I mean, it's not something that I think about all the time. <laughs> How did that happen? Um, I just posted a picture of myself. <laughs> Honestly, and you know, I thought it was a great picture of myself, as as we do, right? You don't post a picture. Wait, of you were yourself. naked? No. Nah. <laughs> oh. Nah, he just, was. He was. She's standing, like, how did I miss he it? He was standing. I think he was standing at the top of rock or something. Yeah. And he had some shorts on. Oh, and it was the imprint. Yes. <laughs> now, and I don't know how that just happened because I mean, you're youthful, so yeah, maybe you wake up and it's just erect all day. But it looks like it wasn't erect. That was. The oh, thing. Christ Almighty. <laughs> So somebody, my, my, Kelvin, let me see this picture. Find it. For, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, got it. I need it's for it's for you know so purposes wait, wait, of wait, wait. my Melissa's job. Melissa's a fan of huge penises, so this is like right what down woman her lane. Isn't? Explain how the picture came this about. So We're not gonna spend I woke a lot of time up in the morning and I posted a photo of myself. When you think you look good in the photo, you post it. You Did know you know what you were doing though? It was a thirst trap. Come on. Let's I mean, I call thought I looked great in the photo. I'm not gonna lie. I was like, this is a great photo of me. Okay. And I post great photos of myself. <laughs> I don't be, I don't post photos like, yo, this photo's not that good, but I'm gonna fuck it. I'm gonna post it anyway. Okay. Nah, I was like, this is a good photo of myself. And then um, I didn't think it was gonna be my most liked photo ever, though. And then yeah, the whole internet just, just kind of. And then took they it. took it down, which is so Instagram took it down, which is so crazy. It's still up at Hollywood Unlocked. So wait, they took it down because it what it went against the community guidelines of supposedly. Of I mean, there was a real hard line there. Get you know, I'm really, I'm really irritated with like the double standard. You know, there's certain people mm, like a certain family <laughs> that can post basically any picture that they mm, want. I'm gonna pass it to me. Well, we don't need to talk about a family. What about Lizzo's 
Lizzo's whole ass crack is on Instagram right now. Do this you is feel, true. Do you think that there's a disparity on how the rules are applied on social media with women versus men? Listen, being a fan of Instagram, <laughs> I'm on Instagram all the time. So I, I see what's on Instagram. So you can't say that mine goes against the guidelines. And then you got these women that are pulling up the the, the panties all the way up so we see the camel toe. Yeah, what's that? You know what I'm saying? Like, it, you, can't, you, you can't have a double standard and lead that up and then take mine down. I agree. Like, it's, it's just, it's, that's just By weird. By the way, where were you when that picture was taken? You Bali. look like you're, I was going to say you look like you're in Bali. Yeah. Okay, all right. Nobody cared where he was when he took, I didn't care where he Let was. Hang out in Bali. I woke up to all these alerts. I thought our Instagram was taken down. It was a bunch of activities. So, you know, thank you for the traffic. Um, okay, so so since then, uh, yeah, you've created this whole conversation online. And I think that, look, I, I want to say that I want to be an advocate for this movement of, you know, uh, free willy, right? <laughs> <laughs> Men should be able to post the same thirst traps that, you know, Melissa posts. Um, you know. You, Facts. You, I don't really your post thirst are, traps. No, yeah, you do. Yes, you do. Do I? Absolutely. You shoot most of my thirst traps. Yeah. How about that one? Well, mm-hmm. <laughs> co-conspirator. <laughs> so, okay. I, got, I had to take some of the heat off. You got to see those thirst traps. Yeah. Okay, sure. so so you're like I said earlier, you're packaged very well. You're a brand. Do you feel like people know you? Or do you think that? Do you think that that was maybe the reaction people had was because they didn't see that as being something that you would do? I mean, I, I don't think that people know me. Nah, I don't think that's like a. It's, it's, it's tough because Instagram is a is, is a tool, but it's even hard to be yourself on Instagram, right? I mean, I mean, who's really themselves on Instagram? It's like all of these fucking packaged photographs, mm-hmm. and then that's kind of all you get, really. You're not really seeing people's, like, real lives. I mean, it's hard to be, like, a real person on Instagram. It's curated you know content. Yeah. Like, produced. It's, it's, it's produced, it's intentional, it's photoshopped, sure. it's, it's got a lot of bells and whistles on it. Yeah. It's not us. Uh huh. So yeah. I mean, it's hard to really get to know somebody off of Instagram. But I, I mean, I try. Mm-hmm. I really do. But do you think that's why people were shocked when you posted that photo? Because we've never seen nothing like that from you. I, I guess, man. I mean, I I didn't understand why people were so shocked. I mean, now I now I do because you know. <laughs> I think maybe prior to that, your image was a lot more clean cut. Not to say that that was there was nothing anything wrong with that picture, but I mean, it's you know. It's yeah. it's it could be a thumbnail on Pornhub, it, it, it you know maybe <laughs> just as a coming but, but attraction why? kind but, of but thing. But why? But why? You know, there's been celebrities if they post a, a picture that's not flattering, nobody really cares. He gets to live there forever, and I have to keep looking at it. Maybe because it looks real and not like he stuffs a sock in it like other mm, people do. Okay, well we're gonna stop talking about your penis. Like it's not <laughs> but uh, it's like it's the fifth guess. So, here. <laughs> so is that was that your first time feeling like, you know, I'm gonna be a little bit more edgier for my audience, or I'm gonna just be who I am, and I'm just gonna post what I like, not thinking about what people's reaction is. I mean, I I don't really, I don't really put that much thought into what I'm posting like that. Um, I just <clears throat> happen to go to all of these amazing places. You know what I'm saying? In my travels for work. And yeah, I just post them shits. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like I'm gonna make an active effort to like post edgier shit. Nah, mm-hmm. I'm just gonna try to be myself as much as possible. So your DMs after that p- photo though? Oh, crazy, crazy. From Still. All, from all over the place. All over the place. Celebrities too. Yeah. Who? Really? You you wouldn't even imagine. Really? We yeah. want to. We want to yeah. imagine. We're Come trying on. to imagine right now. <laughs> Nah, this like right now. <laughs> nah, I ain't doing that. But <laughs> <laughs> nah, but just know that shit was crazy. It was crazy. I was like, damn, that's all I had to do. All right, cool. <laughs> but I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, my 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 DMs always. I have healthy DMs always, but like, what is a healthy DM? <clears throat> Explain. It's just it's it just never ends. It's like never ending DMs all the time. Mm-hmm. But like, this is different. Like it, every DM became sexual. It was not like I'm your fan. I love your. It's right to the, the point. Day. Everything was sexual. Like, what's like the most, every what's, picture. What's the most direct comment that you've heard from somebody on Instagram? You don't even have to say I the mean, name. I mean, every just... single day, still, I, I want to suck your dick. I, like, I want to fuck you. Like, it's like direct. It's like, <laughs> oh, oh, so... It's, y'all, y'all, y'all niggas now. It's I like, just, I know, you know, talk like that. can I just ask you, like how, do, how do you feel about that? I mean, I'm sitting here, mouth agape, don't say anything, Jason. What? Mouth agape? It means my mouth is open. Oh. Because I'm shocked. <laughs> Typical. Out of shock, Typical. you know, because 
and this is no judgment, but I just come from the school of thought. I'm very, I'm a very traditional girly girl. You know, I'm uh, how I don't like to solicit men's attention. I feel like I'm the lady. When you post you know? your tits and your mm -hmm. butt, though, that's gonna sol that's soliciting. Even no, though no, 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 we're not talking about Instagram. Oh, okay. I'm just talking about. Oh. I would never, me personally, oh, say I that would, to a man. I would never you say. You would never something. say, Jason, I want to suck your dick. What? I think. Oh, you sorry. You said. <laughs> no, no, you remember your name is Jason, right? The fuck? Jason, what? Say, <laughs> new, new year, new me. <laughs> the fuck? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Something to see. Listen, if, I, if I'm in a relationship with somebody, oh, hell yeah, I'm going to say all kinds of dirty shit to him. But I'm not going to hit up somebody that I, I know just on Instagram. Like, I know Jason Drula on Instagram. I don't mm -hmm. know him, the human being. I'm not going to say after I see a picture, like, I need to gargle that. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? That was not. Honestly, that was actually good. You never, said, you never said that before? I said that to guys. I was, but, but wait, but yeah, wait, because oh, it felt man. really natural coming yeah, out of Yeah, it was a flow. <laughs> Listen, I had not, to reposition what? my chair a little bit. She's like, I want to gargle God, that. God, <laughs> God took your microphone, your headphone out because you said, thou shalt not lie. Yes, okay. but, but when a woman does slide in your DM, like, like that, like, I think that's kind of hot. I think Me you too. should shoot your shot. Everybody and I, and I, shoot it. And I can appreciate a woman that's uh, both honest and forward and knows what she wants. Mm -hmm. I can appreciate that. So like, I, I, I it's, it's a, it's a double edged sword though. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can, you could definitely be too much, but at the same time, like that first little, little jaw, that was, that's, that's kind of nice. Like, I, I'll take that. So I want to talk to you about his uh, palatial mansion. Okay, so here's the deal. I take, you know, have an Uber take me to his house. He lives literally in the wilderness. Mm. I don't know who else, what else lives over there. It's so fucking far. You know how you get in an Uber and you're like texting and calling and emailing and by then you've wrote, wrote a whole dissertation because yeah. it's so far it was like that, right? Mm -hmm. So you pull it's not up. That far. It's it's far. He, he tripping. So you pull up to this house. The house is so massive. It's literally a bachelor pad. Like I could see that being like a young. A young, um, how you say, uh, Playboy Mansion ish mm -hmm. kind of vibe. Did you design that to be that, like that little, because uh, I think you have a grotto. You have all types of shit going on that makes it like a real um, destination for fun, mm -hmm. that kind yeah. of fun, adult mm -hmm. fun. Yeah, so I mean, I live my life in hotels mostly. You yeah. Know what I'm so, like, I, um, I get all these different ideas from, from, from different hotels that I'm going to across the world. So, like, uh, when I come home, I, I, you kind of get used to a certain kind of lifestyle, so I like I kind of brought that to the house. Mm -hmm. So like my backyard looks like a resort. Know, yeah, you know what I'm saying. So like even those things, even how I like my towels, you know what I'm saying. I like my towels folded up a certain way in my room. Like it's just only because of me living in hotels. Mm -hmm. So like if I come home and it's not like that, it's like damn, where the hell am I? Like you know what I'm saying. So did you break up with Jordan Sparks because she didn't know how to fold the towels? Mm -mm. <laughs> 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 Don't, don't look over here. Man. I mean, I mean, if, if somebody came in my house and did I was, I was looking for y'all help. I'm like, hey, <laughs> like, you see, you look over here, so she ain't got you, bro. I mean, when people come in my house, I have this new cleaning crew. They be putting my towels in different cabinets, and I ain't gonna lie, I be ready to kick them out the way you kicked out Jordan. So, oh that's, my that's god, what, like, bro, stop I, it. you know, I met you when you all were dating because I used to know her, and I, I haven't seen her probably like you haven't, but in a different way. Clearly, what what happened? Like, you know, I think you know. What happened? I mean, that's it that was a long time ago. That was a whole adult life ago, mm -hmm. by the way. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, that situation, it it just fizzled out like it was supposed to. Everything in life happens for a reason, and you know, she's married, she's happy, she has a child, she's doing very well in her life. And then that that situation is what it is. Um, people don't know the full story, and I'm not upset. I hope she's not upset. Um, Did you cheat? The, the mm -hmm. only. I did not cheat. The people were saying that, though, right? And, and 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 the only thing that I'm upset about is when she was on red carpets or people were interviewing her and people asked her if I cheated, and she was like, "No comment." So that silence left the perception that you know what I'm saying. And and like I I thought that was a, a terrible thing to do. Like like why sit here and not lie but lead people on like that? Mm -hmm. you know why didn't you um, defend yourself or did you just feel because like there was no need to? You know what I'm saying? At the end, at the end of the day. Like I'm a grown man. She's she's a woman. You know what I'm saying. She she could do whatever she wants to do. It's not a he say she say thing. I'm, I'm an adult. I don't need to do that. I also don't need to tell the world my entire business either. But to answer your question, no, our breakup had nothing to do with any kind of cheating at all. Do you feel like that works for you or against you? Because it seems like you're a very private person, but also very 
you know, celebrated person. Do you mm-hmm. feel like, you know, looking back at your career, you being so quiet about certain things personally, do you feel like that has helped your career or maybe hurt it? Um, I don't I don't think it had any effect. My career has always just been based on my music. Yeah. And I and I love that. You know what I'm saying? I think every every celebrity's uh attention these days is based on something totally different. And mine was t- totally based on music. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've sold based 100, on talent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I've sold 190 too. million records across the world. Mm-hmm. And it's not based on propaganda, it's not based on a relationship I was in, it's not based the on The dick print came later. Going to yes. jail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tripping. <clears throat> but you know what I'm saying? So it's it's a it's a very unique thing in that last decade, you know what I'm saying, to to be one of the few people um, you know, who's had a career like that, I think is 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 pretty uh it's pretty amazing. And who has a fan base. I mean, the thing that's so amazing about you is just watching from afar, of course. I wanted to, I was telling him last night I wanted to pop up mm. in London to see the Jason Derulo experience because even when you hurt your leg, you were still out there dancing and doing shit that your doctor probably didn't want you to. Mm. I think it's you've done a great job of creating just a fan base that always shows up for you. And yeah, that has sure, to feel sure. great. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So now you've been at Warner Brother Records. I know I've been trying to, uh, I was trying to interview you a long time ago when I wasn't even really interviewing people. I don't know. I just thought, you know, he's at Warner Brother and I knew Felicia at the time. Mm -hmm. You're one of the few artists that's been there for a long time. Yeah, 10 years. Yeah, bro. Yeah, I've been that's the down. same. That's the same label that um, Prince had put "Slave" in his face. Remember, he had put the. Slave? No, wasn't it Sony? Weren't they? No, no it, was, it, was it was Warner Brothers. Brothers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sony. So how you doing over there? <laughs> <laughs> Clearly that's amazing. Whole, ooh, that's a whole another story. That's for another time. Do you have creative control over your music? I mean, because you know what your fans want. You know how to feed them what you want creatively. I've I've been on the set of your video with you. I've seen you from which shoe to go with this to that. I mean, the, mm-hmm. what the feathers look... I mean, like, you're really, you know, creatively uh, good at what you do. I mean, do For you sure. have creative control? Yeah. Um, I mean, once you reach a certain point in your career, I mean, you you, you pretty much take the reins. Uh, I mean, most people, I, I would say. Um, so, yeah, creative control musically. I mean, I direct my own videos, you know, I choreograph. I, you know, I, I pretty much do it all. But um, in terms of the label, um, that's, you know, I've been there for 10 years. Let's you know, keep it at that. Mm-hmm. And it's, the time is almost... It's sort of like when you go through kindergarten and then middle school and high school, after 10 mm-hmm. years, you're ready to graduate and go to somewhere else. So, I mean, that's what... Mm-hmm. I, I dropped out. I'm just saying. Yeah, but I say, some people don't make it 10 years in a career. That's that's an accomplishment in itself. I mean, like oh, you, yeah, and Madonna, sure. you and Madonna are literally like probably the only two that are still holding the fort down over there. So at this point, the bag got to be real big or you own master. Do you own your masters and stuff? No, not yet. Oh, Prince. What's the process? Mm. What's the process like when it comes to owning your masters? Because everybody, you know, big stars say you have to own your masters. Prince, like it's- no, no. Let's make it. Let's make it local. Prince said, mm. "Yeah, that's what the slave was about." No, I know. So, but it's 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 seen. It's kind of said very arbitrarily, like you know, mm-hmm. snap your fingers and just request that you own your masters. But it seems to be like a really involved process. What's the process of attempting to own the masters of your work? I mean, after I'm done with with uh, the deal that I'm in now, mm-hmm. whether I, I stay, when is that over? Uh, I have one more album. Okay, and then uh, and then we're all gonna come to the graduation party. <laughs> <laughs> Whether I continue with Warner Brothers or go mm-hmm. somewhere else, um, I mean the the artist that I am today, I can pretty much have whatever deal that I want to. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm literally walking in as a free agent. You know, think about mm-hmm. it from from a sports uh, standpoint. You're so, LeBron after you just won the ring in Cleveland. Exactly. Okay, gotcha. So like you can literally pick where you're going, pick yeah. your team. You know what I'm saying? He's like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm take I'm gonna take these guys with me. This mm-hmm. is how we are gonna do it. Mm. Uh, and you could take it or leave it. Mm-hmm. If you don't take it, then I'm gonna go over over to this team over yeah. here. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So you you have a lot more to a lot more to play with. Have you been thinking about maybe going independent? Because I feel like maybe you have the I don't know you have the inf- infrastructure. Is that something mm-hmm. that's on your mind? Maybe going independent. You know, it's it's crazy because it's it's so many options today. And I I was thinking to myself like. Um, cause a lot of people were free agents recently, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And I'm thinking to myself like, you know, Drake, Taylor Swift, like why aren't people doing more, uh, of their own stuff, not just own stuff, but more creative deals. Like say, you yeah. know, partnering up with Amazon, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, like humongous corporations like that. Um, you know, and trying something different, 
Um, so you know, it's, the, the sky is the limit. You don't have to go one particular way or do it all yourself. I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't recommend doing it all yourself mm-hmm. because you want a big machine. You know, yeah, what yeah. I'm saying? you want the infrastructure. I mean, little mama's doing it by herself. That's cool. I, right. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you? You know what? You know what I will. What I will say. Mm-hmm. Let me just say. I have to say this publicly. I was yes. gonna say it last night, but okay. I wanted to wait till today. Mm-hmm. Never, ever in interviewing anybody have I ever met up with the person I was gonna interview before I interview him because I think that they're gonna try to persuade me. Yeah. So he says. Come by the house. I want to talk to him. Like, oh, here we go. This, I got to look this nigga in the face and lie. Tell him all the <laughs> shit I ain't going to ask him. <laughs> and I go to your house, and you literally did not ask me to not ask anything. And mm-hmm. I, I just appreciate you you that. Asked, you didn't send, he didn't send I, No, you. but I appreciate that because, yeah. you know, you never asked me to do favors or do, like, you just, you know, you have an appreciation for what I do. You bring me in your world, uh, and I leave feeling you, very you, poor. You never asked why I asked you to come over. Oh, well, why did you ask me? Well, besides I, getting me drunk and dropping me off in the middle of the street nah, and I, leaving I, me, I, by I really, I wanted, I wanted, <laughs> nah, Jay, I wanted to look in your eyes and and see like like what kind of person you were. I I'm I'm been at a point in my career where like I don't really have to do anything, right? Mm. So like, I I wanted to be sure that I that I wanted to to come here. You know what I'm saying? And. Yeah, and, and, and shout out to your, your shout eyes. out to Grey Goose for making them eyes. <laughs> I feel like you were supposed to have been here a couple of times before. Right. Am I right? We were like, trying to get them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I appreciate you coming, and you know, uh, you know, we're we're getting in his. Uh, was that a Rolls Royce we we're in yesterday, or what was that? Yeah, it's a wraith. Okay, so we get in the wraith. You know, it looks Christmas lights, and for all of you who were poor and never had a Christmas tree, <laughs> there were a lot of lights. <laughs> getting a wraith. So he has to make a U turn to pull out, and I see a Bentley there. I think it was a Bentley, and I go, "Oh, whose car is that?" And he, 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 in a real rich way, you know, <laughs> turned, looked over his shoulder like, that's mine, you know? So I just want to say. Like, you at my house, whose no, car is it going to be? Mean, and then he was like, well, I thought it was, might have been like the cleaning lady's car. I was like, <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> By this time, I had been sipping. Then there's like this Lamborghini, and I go, oh, I think Chris Brown has one of those. He goes, he ain't got that oh, one. Oh, come on. I mean, <laughs> what are you doing, bro? <laughs> you know. But, I, I, but even with all this success and the toys and all that, you know, you're a super humble guy. Do you feel like People, do you feel like who people see you as publicly is exactly who you are? Um, nah, I don't. I was gonna tell you no. Nah, damn. We were we so. were having a discussion before you came in mm-hmm. about the perception of Jason Derulo and who he really is. I was like, who he really is is a mystery. Nobody really knows. That's real. You know. Um. So maybe this is why you're choosing to be a little bit more open. Open um, on Instagram and let us, and, and, you know, open the door a little bit of a crack to mm-hmm. let us in. But nobody really knows who you actually so, are. So to ask y'all, so how do you, how do you think people accomplish that? How do you how do you think people accomplish um, letting people all the way in without like being too, like way too abrasive? I think there's a balance because you look mm-hmm. on one hand and you look at you and you go, you sold 190 million records. Mm-hmm. You are, uh, you know, <clears throat> you by way of Miami with Haitian descent and still staying true to your roots and the work you do with Sean Penn and your foundation. And you literally open the door to work with people who are the elite at the top and still have a way of staying grounded around your people. Mm-hmm. So I think there's there becomes the idea of can you really be you and have it all? You know, mm-hmm. there's ways I could, meaning not you, us, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? I could polish myself up and be the brand that, say, Sony Television or CBS wants. Mm-hmm. But then would I be true to who I really am and what I feel? Mm-hmm. You know, and I, you know, I wonder, like, could you be all of who you are and still be at the level of success that you that you have obtained? First of all, there has to be a desire for you to want the world to be be let in to know who you actually are as a person. And there's a, mm-hmm. there's obviously different facets to all of us. Like, you know, from you're from Haiti. Mm-hmm. How often do you go back? I go off often. I got for school there, so. Uh, okay, yeah. so that's something that me as just the average person did not know about you. Mm-hmm. Um, so that can be a part of the door that you, you know, throw wide open and mm-hmm. kind of see what a day-to-day, what your day-to-day life in Haiti looks like when you go back and also what but you, but you know what's crazy mm-hmm. though so like all the all <clears throat> i mean in in aggregate i think i've donated about 5 5 million dollars mm-hmm. and nobody would ever know about that you right. know why i know because why let him let him let him because people don't care about that people care about when somebody goes to jail people mm-hmm. care about when people are overdosing people mm-hmm. care about when people are talking about drugs they don't care about like the like the positive things mm-hmm. so like 
Mm-hmm. Me being myself is doing those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. So like, if that's not what uh, media is wants to to promote, then people won't won't ever know me because mm-hmm. you I'm not going to jail, so mm-hmm. you're not you're not gonna ever see that. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't do codeine. I don't mm-hmm. I don't sip lean, mm-hmm. so you're not gonna see me do that. No, listen, I understand. I I totally mm-hmm. understand when it comes to what people want to focus on mm-hmm. and when what then the things that you do, the the greater good that you commit to your community and how mm-hmm. people are like, huh? I. Totally feel you on that. So it's just kind of like a what's the point kind of thing. Yeah. Um, Well, that goes back to again, right? I mean, his most viewed post is the penis post. Mm -hmm. And it almost teaches you bad behavior. Like, oh, shit, I need this to go viral again. I got a record coming out. Guess what? Penis all over the record. (laughs) You know? (laughs) (laughs) Serious. So being that you are, I wouldn't say mysterious, but you just to yourself, when you're courting a woman, do you ever get like paranoid because wait, wait courting? Oh, is <laughs> do you court? See, you know when you see, in- see how you feel how you got to talk to me when you interview when you when interview you're a woman. when you interview people you know it's re- there's a real fine line that you don't want to cross. You know, we ain't talking to a cat. We gonna get to that in a minute. <laughs> court. Okay, that, that, that was just cute. I just wanted to. I thought what you did. Do you court women? I mean, <laughs> what does I mean, that what, mean? What does that mean exactly? It's, I mean, taking them out on dates. Maybe yeah. they come through the resort you have at your home. I mean, like, you gotta feed them. So, <laughs> but do you get paranoid because in two seconds somebody can record your personal business and then mm. you're a superstar? So yeah, so uh, it's a certain. It depends on who it is, right? So like, if if I'm just meeting somebody at the club or something like that, um, you can't you can't come in like with a phone. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. like that that has to go. Like you can keep your phone, but you just can't come inside then. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's Wait, that. wait, what does that mean? Physically leave so, your phone you outside the, phone. the studio. Yeah. Wait, or you can't come in. So does that mean you could wait he, outside in the lobby? He didn't say you could go home. <laughs> oh. He said you can't come in, so it doesn't mean she gives you time. Oh, she could go home. No, she could go home. She gotta go home. Oh, oh okay. I thought, you can't I be in the she was sucking you off in the car. Nah, or nah, nah, nah. <laughs> I'm saying yeah. So <laughs> you have that you have that choice. You know what I'm saying? As as a woman, if you can c- come in, you have to understand where I'm coming from as well, because there is that danger of you know somebody recording you. I could be I could Hell be yeah. asleep. You know what I'm That's saying? That's what they get you. I, I see the, I see the shit all the time. Like y'all be posting the shit. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Like um, celebrities getting uh, filmed while they're sleeping. Like mm-hmm. all kinds of craziness. Love those videos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, you just got to be as careful, careful as you can. So I asked you last night, what was your type of woman? Because some people like, you know, I like me, a, you know, like a <laughs> thick black chick, or I like me a, you know, white girl, or whatever. And what was your answer? Uh, first of all, I think uh, all y'all fans think that I only like white girls. Mm-hmm. Ah, because <laughs> um, he'd be like, "Oh yeah, he only like white girls. He he don't like us." I'm like, "What? Where did y'all get that from?" They put their phones away. Like when have when like like where had they got that? They missed that one pool party I came to where all the girls was black. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I I don't discriminate. I don't. I, it's not. I don't have one specific type. I like all women. I think women are beautiful in in different shapes, colors, sizes. It, it really don't matter. Mm-hmm. Cause you were with Jordan Sparks when she was fat, but does she end up? Damn, getting... Jason. No, I'm overweight. I can call fat people fat. <laughs> Lizzo's fat. She said no, she's fat. And she's accepted, that and we've embraced her, right? She started this whole new trend. By has, the way, has she accepted it? What, like, why are you? saying I mean, that? she just started this whole trend where obesity is in now. I guess I don't know. That's no, what they did, said. She, did she actually say that? Yeah, she's no, she said... been, well, she's very. She's gone to Lakers games in assless chaps and twerked. For the jumbotron, she so trying, but what she call herself fat is my question. Does she call herself like the actual she, word fat? Lizzo, she no, she's fat. Move on, it's okay. okay. And I'm not even it's saying so fat bad. in a fat shaming way. If you're black, you could say nigga. If you're fat, you could say fat. Whatever. So <laughs> when it comes, to, <laughs> just make it up. Rules. When it comes to, because uh, they're gonna say whatever they want anyway. New year, new dick, head, <laughs> same shit. You know. I'm, I can't change. I tried. Therapy is in the horizons, but not today. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's time for another Hollywood hookup. Yes. You've got to check out The Tilt's new show, Love Really? That's right. Now, the hosts on this show review all the reality shows from Love & Hip Hop to The Bachelor, so you got to check it out. Look at this link right here. And that's your Hollywood hookup. So, you, so with women, okay, mm. so are you open to one-night stands? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> 
Absolutely. Yeah, I don't know. See, this is why we need to have more honesty. Okay. Can I be all the way honest? Yeah. Can I, are you sure? Yeah. Okay, I'm I mean, just... I, damn, I'm, I don't know now. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yeah, more. Go ahead, go ahead. I threw a dinner party for Wendy Williams. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jason is a, is a very smart investor. He invests in a lot of stuff. <laughs> Catch Restaurant is one of his restaurants. So when he pulls up... Oh. Wait, hold on a second. I didn't know that. Catch is one of your investments? Yeah. Well, in Beverly Hills? You're not getting mm -hmm. no free meal. I already know you try to get the hookup. No, I was not. No, I know when Melissa's in the interview and I go, you know, Nick Cannon owns Sky Jets. You own Sky Jets? Oh my God, I want to go to Las Vegas. Uh, so, he, so Catch is one of his investments, right? So, you know, he rolls in, they roll out the red carpet. He gets anything he wants. Mm. He's used to rolling in Catch and getting anything he wants. He comes to Wendy's party. <laughs> At Catch, where we had it, you know, we had whatever. And he ended up, you know, he ended up taking one of my homeboy's girls and like, <gasps> damn, like took her down. And I'm thinking like, you come in and catch and get whatever you want don't mean the people too. <laughs> <laughs> are you, are you like a... <laughs> then you stealing them. Wait, are you a, no, that's why you don't bring your piece of out in public. I don't. Leave them at home. <laughs> Wait, so are I didn't, you? I didn't know. I didn't know Shorty was with. Buddy. And you didn't care. So do you? Um, <laughs> <laughs> what's your body count? Damn, I don't know. I, I don't know. But I, uh, if um, I'm trying to change the subject. Well, who knows that? The 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 Shorty was was standing next to the guy, but that don't mean that they're together. That together. they're together. You know, but that's and another, evidently not. They're not married. And that's another reason I'm single too, because you know, like. Girls will leave their guys all the time. You know what I'm saying? For you. Yeah. And I've seen so much shit in my life that I'm like, damn. Yeah, I'm not I'm not ready With for this. With all the stuff that you've seen, this is a real fucking question. It goes mm -hmm. back to the, your DMs and how women are talking about gargling your balls. You know what I'm saying? S yeah. Melissa, what? stop saying what you want to do. <laughs> I I'm not going to sit here any longer and accept. Didn't nobody say gargling the ball? Okay, let me ask him. Did anybody say that in your DMs? Because you said they said a lot of shit and they were talking about sucking dick and all kinds of things. I'm sure they God, said, I want to feel it in the back of my throat, yeah, gargle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, yeah, they said a lot of things, but they didn't say gargling the ball. No one said gargling. That's you. No, that I'm was still like, like, see, I, like listen, was, I'm having a hot flash right now. Just Melissa, hold on one second. I've known here. Melissa a long time. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. Don't do it, what's fucker. No. Don't do it. People that've been what's watching this, people that's been watching this show for a long time know she likes a large penis. She didn't say nothing about going here when we did the prep. You showed her the photo of this man's penis, and literally, she's trying to find ways. Of we were. That's what we were talking the about. She said she had an honest question for you. I mean. <laughs> Okay, listen. Where, where, were, we, where, were, we where were we going with this? Okay, here we are. You were talking about his dick in the back of a throat. No, hold on. I can't. No, and he was in conversation. And, is and just he's going seen down so down. much. Okay. Do you, Be a journalist. Come on. Do you think you're going to find happily ever after with all of the stuff that you've seen? Because I know a, a lot of guys in the industry who have had. It's basically like shooting fish in a barrel when you're when you're rich and you're famous and you're good looking as a man. And especially like the war of the sexes is over. These motherfuckers won, ladies. It's just statistically, it's just a, a reality. The ratio is massively what off. Are you asking I him? asked him. I'm like, do you think you're gonna find happily ever after in the most traditional sense where you're gonna find a woman that you can trust and have that kids you, with that you're gonna be able to have kids with that you're gonna want to look at and fuck every day? You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. do you think you're gonna find happily ever after with everything that you've seen and experienced? Thus far in life? I'm going to be completely honest with you. So that's a question that I ask myself every day. Because if you would have asked me that five years ago, I would have been like, absolutely, yeah, for right. sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm going to get married. I'm going to have kids. I'm mm -hmm. going to have like the, you know, the white picket fence. I'm mm -hmm. going to do the whole thing. Um, but now, uh, I don't know if I'm, I'm going to find that. And I don't, I, I guess, you know, in my industry, in the things, the, all the people that I've seen, all the shit that I've seen in my life is kind of, it's, it's scarred the whole situation. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's hard for me to trust mm -hmm. a woman. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that you're not going to find happily ever after in your DMs. It's not happening. Why, but, but why do you think that, though? Everybody in his DM ain't trying to gargle his penis. This, 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 <laughs> really? We need to put some respect on the DM. <laughs> Listen, there are DMs some people... are very... That's, that's, that's a beautiful thing. DMs yeah. are like... You can find... They're healthy. Yeah. Really? So has somebody slid in your DM and got fucked? Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> you ain't gotta say no names. I'm just one. I mean, I mean, yeah. Bro. Okay, ladies. I, I'm interested. Here's, wait, ladies. Here's his Instagram. <laughs> what, what's what? What's one of the things you've seen that scarred you? Though? Um, man, I'll be I, like walking out of a club and I like I'll see a, a girl with a guy an entire night and then she just like 
completely dead, buddy. And shorty got the guys trying to grab her, and like it don't matter. Well, like, at least she's doing it in his face. Like, oh, nigga, goodbye. Look, what's I mean, it. I mean, everything that you could possibly imagine. You know what I'm saying? Like married women. Women on yeah. uh, what's 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 the shit called the um like right before they get married uh the bachelorette bachelor oh. parties yeah, yeah you know I mean but, they have but, the whole look, like bachelorette thing on you know what I'm saying like but does, well, everything it's one but, last but does anything that happened on your bachelor or bachelorette night even matter shit it matters to me I mean I don't want to be marrying a girl and she fucking goes and fucks <laughs> goddamn <laughs> uh, what, what, celebrity you, on my on the eve of my marriage but bro. would you be open to like a group thing you know like get you a uh, like get you like a um a wide array of different types of them so you got your Asian chick who you could you know y'all all together but you mm. have a different Type of person, but you have your own world. They you cheat too. Exactly. I know, but f- uh, listen, I've, everybody cheats. We've watched the show a thousand times. That's not my question. Everybody cheats. Mm-hmm. I, I'm somebody in here right now at this table. She texted on her a- a computer. She cheated right now. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you cheating on? <laughs> Everybody's cheating. Okay, but would you, would you ever think of like a group thing? Um, I, I thought of that um, because it. What, like polyamory? You know, it, yeah. Okay. Because I mean, it is it is different. I mean, it is twenty twenty. You know, people are accepting all kinds of shit now. Um, you know, so it's something that that kind of crossed my mind. But then you think about like when you have kids, like what is that going to be like? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, Built in babysitters. Yeah, I mean, it's it's an option. I also like in my mind, in the back of my mind, all the time now, I'm I'm thinking of having kids. I'm not thinking of marriage, but I'm thinking of having kids. I mean, I'm thirty years old now, so like. It's 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 a really weird thing, man. Because when I you asked me ten years ago, would I have kids and not be married? I would have never thought that was like in my mind's eye. But to me, having kids is important. But like marriage doesn't seem like it's something that I want to do. Mm. So so, let's so it's like like finding a baby mama. Like that's that should sound crazy. Yeah. Well, it, hopefully you don't get a baby mama because that means you get her pregnant and then she's gone after that. Like you're not together, right? That's what that's what baby but, mama that, but that wouldn't be the worst thing, is my point. Really? He's saying he's open to it now. Yeah. yeah. Well, Tiffany Haddish wants to have a kid. Word. Yeah. If you had better Wi Fi, we could have made that connection. <laughs> you an idiot. I called <laughs> Tiffany. <laughs> okay. So let me let me switch it up just a little bit. So you're now acting, you're in the movie Cats. Uh-huh. Right. Okay. So all star cast, super mm-hmm. all star cast. Idris uh, Alba, Taylor Swift, Judy Dench, um, Jennifer Hudson, the fat guy that does the talk show, James, James Corden. Corden, him. Mm-hmm. Everybody. Why did the movie not do well? I told them if they put more me in it, it would have went. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I they fucked y'all. up. I told you. <laughs> I told you. I told you. Nah, just playing. I um, mean, they couldn't. Your le- the leotard you had to wear was the problem. I heard. I mean, I <laughs> <laughs> when I watched the film for the first time with everybody else, I was in a room and the audience was applauding. They were roaring. Like it, they enjoyed the fucking movie, like for sure, through and through. Um, I think when the first reviews came out, Mm. every reviewer became a coward and nobody wanted to stand on their own two feet and and review the movie as themselves. Mm. And everybody just kind of goes with the flow. You know what I'm saying? Everybody jumped on the bandwagon. Everybody jumped on the on the bandwagon. Everybody knows that Cats is weird. Everybody knows that Cats is left field. It's it's been. A hit on Broadway f- yeah. for like as long 20, as you can 20, 30 years? I've seen one like of the that, biggest yeah. musicals of all time. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows that it's weird. Like, uh, yeah, we know that. But it's it's massive. Mm-hmm. So um, being brought to the big screen, you have to expect the same. It's very left field. It's it's not playing with the rules. It's playing against every rule. Um, but just no, nobody was brave enough to um, review it like the artistic piece that it was. And everybody reviewed it as if it was like a normal film. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I think that's what killed it. Um, but I mean, the movie's still at 70 million right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, so it'll still make money. You know what I'm saying? So like, it's definitely not as huge a hit as it should have been. But I mean, it'll, people are not going to lose money though. I think he's right. I, I, I was just thinking to myself as you were talking about it. I was like, that is a really, really excellent way to explain what went wrong. Because, Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really easy to just jump on the bandwagon of what one person says, and then the mob mentality will just carry it along. Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah, it shouldn't have been looked at as, you know, a regular film. Because it it wasn't. It was 
very avant-garde, mm-hmm. you know? But now that you're an actor, mm-hmm. and you're and this is your first role. Yep. Mm-hmm. Now that you're an actor, um, what what other type of projects do you want to do? So my next one is Cats Part 2. Hey! <laughs> I'm, I'm just I was about to say, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying it. <laughs> nah, just playing. So, <laughs> um, so my 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 ultimate goal is is af- action film. So I'm I'm uh, developing two action films right now, mm-hmm. and um, that's always been the goal. I just needed a bridge um, between music and uh, acting, and I thought Cats was the perfect bridge. Um, but you know, I mean, but you still did it. You accomplished it, and I remember you all on Jimmy Fallon. I think where you all did the where they arranged all of you. Well, that was Jimmy Fallon, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. I thought that was great, and there was so many good. Powerful people in that movie, so sure. I mean, I mean, I'm for just, that to be your I'll, first role, and you're yeah, like with big. Dame Judi Dench for crying mm-hmm. in a movie with da- Dame Judi Dench, that's amazing. But for you're sure, going to be sure. playing um, Ron Isley yeah. in a, a biopic on the Isley Brothers. Yeah, so uh, that that's wow. uh, a film uh, about the the mob uh, mentality of the music industry mm-hmm. uh, thirty years ago, mm-hmm. um, uh, fifty years ago, excuse me, mm-hmm. and um, and and what the the whole industry was like back then, mm-hmm. with the whole mob kind of running the entire industry. Wow! All right, so you, you so you opened up for Gaga years ago, right? Uh, yeah, like eight years ago. So when you see her success now in acting, do you do you like do you want that same experience? Like, do you want because she's won a well, she's won an Oscar? She didn't get it for she won an Oscar for best song. But she's an Oscar. Yeah, yeah, she's it's an like, Oscar for best song. I mean, she's now the Academy. I think she won a Golden Globe for her performance in. Uh, was it American um, Horror Story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, like, yeah she yeah, blew yeah. me the fuck away. Do those awards <laughs> matter? Like, do you look uh, at Grammys and have you won a Grammy? No, I haven't. Do you look at that? Is that a goal to get these decorations? No, I mean, of course, those those awards are are amazing, you know, and I, I don't take anything away from awards. Um, but what matters to me the most are are two things. Uh, is my fa- is my family good? You know what I'm saying. Am I gonna be able to feed my family with what I'm doing, and the actual act? So like me making music, I love making music, and I'm able to feed my family doing it. If I had to pick between a Grammy and selling 190 million records, I'm gonna pick 190 million records every single day, because there's people that have won Grammys that have that don't have a pot to piss in. Mm. So if I gotta choose a side, you know, I'm gonna. Well, I'm Monique gonna... has an Oscar too, and she's not acting anymore, right? It's not even a choice right now. It's like, is she anyone going to hire her? She told Oprah to suck her dick. I mean, she's probably done. She, yeah, she's... So, so yeah. It, yeah, so that's... It's, to, 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 to say it uh, plainly, it's the fans that matter the most. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And whatever the, the fans want, they go out and, and buy and then they go and on. see. So, yeah, I'm, I'm focused on on fans and what they want to go and see. Mm. So, you know, the, ac- the action side is more my thing, too. So, like, you know, Gaga's path is a little different. You know, she... Um, She's kind of continuing to do the the musical thing, whereas I I, I probably won't do a musical for for a long time now. Mm-hmm. Because of cats? Um, no, because I need to separate myself as an as an yeah. actor, just mm-hmm. plain actor. Mm-hmm. You know why not I mean? a Why not a, a romance movie? I'm with that too, but I mean, action is like first shit on my list. That's what you want to. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know what was that action movie that Eddie Murphy and uh... Dolomite? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I couldn't even get through the first frame of that shit. Uh, Beverly amazing. Hills Cop. What's up, Jive Turkey? Like I can't. <laughs> it's not your thing. Anyway. Beverly Hills Cop. Yes, yeah. Beverly Hills Cop. Yeah, that's a, that was action, right? It's franchise. It um, was no, that was super action. No, it was super action. Yeah. But you're talking about like Die Hard, Transformers type action. He trying yeah, to get like busy. Mar- yeah, I'm like Marvel. You know, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, superhero shit. Backflips. Yeah. Okay, I am right. Legend. Yeah, Black yeah. Panther. Black Panther. That, I mean, that is action. It's no, like a thriller. Was, yeah. That's like a thriller action. It wasn't action. It was action, but not superhero action, like okay. what he's talking about. Put yeah. him in. Uh, they're doing Black Panther two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Put the black actor in Black Panther two. No, I know. It'll blow his career. Trust me. <laughs> so bad for stereotyping. Trust me. All right. So why? W- what did you think about uh, the death of Nipsey Hussle? Oh man, that was one of the saddest things, man. Like honestly, uh. Dude was just a, a down to earth, cool motherfucker, man. Mm-hmm. Like through and through. I say that because he was really big on coming from an impoverished community and going back and giving back. Mm-hmm. And you do similar stuff with Haiti. Yeah. You talked about having a school there. Uh, by the way, if you don't have kids, you could be like Oprah and just those are your kids. Hmm. 
No, that, there's no joke there. I'm just people looking at me like I'm. I ain't saying nothing. We didn't laugh. Just, okay, no, but everybody in the I'm room is looking at head. me. Oh, <laughs> I, I, I actually, want, I like, actually want kids myself. I can't have my own kids. No, but do you want kids? Yeah, I want kids. But you just don't want the woman to be like sleep in the bed every day after you have them. I don't know. I don't. You figure it out. <laughs> but no, but I was saying you you go back and you give back to Haiti. Mm-hmm. I want to learn more about the Sean Penn stuff that you do and how that relationship came about and. We need more people to know about that. Yeah, so um, Sean Penn uh, has been doing great work in Haiti for a long time, and um, I'm of Haitian descent. So uh, Haiti is it's, it's it's my home, it's my origin, it's you know where my whole entire family is from. Um, so like my biggest goal in life is to have Haiti be the destination that it actually is, and yeah. people go there for vacation and their honeymoons and. Um, enjoy the the most beautiful beaches on the on, in the, on the planet because they know that it's that beautiful. Mm-hmm. So that's like a, a huge goal of mine, you know. Um, so partnered up with Sean Penn and his uh, um, uh, organization, and basically they kind of big brothered my organization to help get it started and off the ground. Um, they were called uh, J- JPHRO before, now they're called Core. Uh, my mine is called uh, Just for You. And uh, in the process, man, I mean, you know, uh, tens of thousands of book bags uh, in L.A. You know, we're doing that in we, L.A., yeah, not, we just not, not just Haiti, right? So um, uh, built a school. I mean, that school is thriving. It's a performing art school where, you know, kids can actually get up and uh, play instruments and learn how to play instruments, oh, yeah. learn how to record you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Learn their vocals. And even if that's not something that they continue to do in their lives, they're learning discipline. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, you know, things like that, man. I've, I've always just kind of been really active uh, in helping Haiti, but also when there's a tragedy happening like uh, Bahamas. So we went to Bahamas. I was on the ground uh, cleaning up myself, but we were able to send out troops to um, clean up. Didn't you just say last night you want to go to Australia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause yeah. you know all the fires and shit are going on. That's crazy. That's, that's amazing. So mm-hmm. you're, you, and then you were like, "What did you, what did you say?" Nah, uh-uh. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. Do you have a relationship with Wyclef? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Wyclef stole all the money over there. That's what they said. Red Cro- he, there was those allegations. I don't believe Wyclef. that, man. Well, don't, Jason doesn't believe that. Which believe Jason? That. Jason uh, Derulo. He don't believe that. Well, I read what's online, and I <laughs> and I know we live in a world where if it's online, it's real. <laughs> Wyclef, where the money at? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what was I gonna say? Oh, what was I? I don't know what I said about Australia. Was it something we shouldn't share? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I was trying to figure out. You said some crazy shit. I was like, I'm gonna go to Australia. You were like, What are you gonna do? I'm like, What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a real life question. What would you do to help out in Australia? Because it's horrific what's happening there. There's been there's almost a billion animals killed. Twelve million. Acres of land have been decimated by fire. These fires have been raging for over two months. I feel like there's some gov- government corruption in regards to why are we just knowing about the level of, you know, tragedy that's happening there. What What do you want to do there? Are you going to pick up a hose and like start? You know? I, but I will. He already and, got and, one. And and, and that's Listen. The, and, and that's and, <laughs> yeah, and that's the, and that's the thing. Like that's the mentality that I think far too many of ha- of us have is. What are we gonna do? Mm-hmm. Or like, why? Why is my dollar gonna help? Right. If yeah. everybody has that same mentality, then no one's ever gonna do nothing's anything. Nothing's gonna ever happen. Right. So yes, I'm I'm Jason Derulo, but I, I could still pick up a hose and 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 I could pick up a shovel and, and clean up um, debris. I mean, I'm I'm a person. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And I am a person with a platform as well, so mm-hmm. that I can use my platform to get people aware. Mm-hmm. I think people are not even aware that this is the biggest fire that's ever happened. Yeah. You know in co- yeah, in comparison to California wildfires that happened in uh late last year, in comparison to the Amazon, this is like a hundred times fold worse. One hundred percent. And there's gonna be catastrophic consequences for this fire, like worldwide, just in terms of the ecosystem. The global ecosystem is going sure. to be affected by this situation. So 100%. I agree with you. But that's so are you coming with me? I, here's the thing. I love Australia. One thing that broke my heart is um, I was there a couple of years ago with my friend Nick, and he sent me a video of a place that we went hiking mm-hmm. on fire. And oh, man. Yeah, it's your, like... Your co-host ain't shit. 
Just both so of you, you know. no, no. We both haven't even really looked at each other, but we both are over him and you. <laughs> she said, I love Australia. You know, you coming? What the fuck? Think of like, what is no happening way. right now? You know what? Like, Listen, I've, I've learned a lot Check about it. Jason recently. I'm asking I'm if she's coming okay? to Australia. Everybody right. in the goddamn room. Well, the last room. time she went to Haiti, she got kicked out. Wow. Damn. I didn't. I didn't get kicked out. Kim Mar- Kardashian asked that she be deported. I went to Haiti with Marcia Dyson on a humanitarian mission. Um, with for Sean Penn? No, it, I wasn't with Sean Penn. Oh, oh. I was with... Um, uh, he was there, though. Yeah, he was there. Everybody was there. Oprah was there. Um, uh, what's his name? The guy who does Meet the Fockers. What's his name? The actor? Ben Stiller. Ben Stiller. He was there. Um, and so I was there to put on a party or a Christmas event for... Uh, kids from six orphanages. This was very much a you know uh, humanitarian mission, and Kim was there with Chris Jenner, and um, I wish I could have been there when they told you to pack your shit. They didn't. That, that's not what happened. Kim, Chris went over to Marcia Dyson, and she basically said that Kim was very uncomfortable with me being there. So could we make arrangements to send me home? But why? Wait, finish this story. Then what happened? And so Marcia Dyson said to her, she was like, that might be your daughter, but that's my daughter and she's not going anywhere. Oh, so you stayed? Uh, yes, I stayed. Oh, I thought you left. That's no. Right. Oh. To, Marcia Dyson knew my intentions for being there wasn't a good wasn't for a good press opportunity. Mm. It was because I wanted to participate in helping, you know, create a moment for kids that had lost almost practically but, everything. But that was probably Kim's intention too. Whatever. <laughs> It didn't seem like I'm it just, at the time. You know I'm, what I'm you saying? You know I'm playing. So yeah. But, but now you have now you have a pathway to go back to Haiti and grab a ho- what? No, the hose is in Australia. <laughs> you can go to Haiti and help the people there. No, I, because you actually do care. Yes, yes, I, I do. Y'all jokes a, aside. Yes, I do have a philanthropic spirit. This whole table ain't shit. <laughs> <laughs> You the worst though. <laughs> no, listen. No, you I'm the governor. So, yo, um, the head of the table. No, I really. Uh, so you've written songs for everybody, uh, and da- Danny Kane, basically everybody, Diddy and Cassie. Now that Cassie is a new mother and she's uh, been freed, do you plan on helping to get in? The you suit? said been freed. I can't with you. Well, I meant freed from her relationship. I know what you meant. I meant like you know, single. That's yes. what I meant. Well, well, she's married. Now she's married. I don't know what's going on these days. I barely pay. She attention. seems extraordinarily happy. Are you gonna write for her again? Would you still write for other people? Um, not You're really. too rich now. You don't have time. I mean, so some of the songs that I that don't necessarily work for me end up working for other people. Mm. So like, I write that way, but it's not my intention to like, yo, I'm gonna sit down and write a song for this person. No. So if Chris comes over and he hears something that he <laughs> likes, you'll let him have it, but you have to get writing credit and publishing yeah, all yeah, that. Of course. Okay, so you still do that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, do you did you make most of your money from doing that or from your own music? Well, you tour a lot, so my own music, and uh, I mean the bulk of, the bulk of money comes from touring, mm-hmm. um, but not 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 the touring that you're thinking, not like uh, big show touring. It's like more spot spot dates are the biggest money dates. What's the biggest place you performed in front of, or like amount of people? Big, yeah, people. Um, in Africa, I performed in, I, in mm, three million. Three million. People? Yeah. Morocco was like 1.5 million. Million. Wait, wow. physical bodies? Physical bodies. Wait, you're not nervous? I mean, like, I talk in front of 200 people and I'm over it. <laughs> you I know, like, you, the more people, the less pressure. Yeah, you know, it, it, you can't even, your eyes don't see that far. So yeah, it's you, just like, it's just. <laughs> it, it doesn't feel any different because you can't, really? you can't see that far. Damn. That's so amazing. So they, ha- they have to have physical screens. That are like like halfway through, and then they have physical screens that are like you know what I'm saying. So you can't you can't see that far. So I always thought you were an artist that got more international support than you did here back home. Is is that accurate? It's about fifty fifty. So in America, I get fifty percent of sales in America and fifty percent just abroad in general. But um, in terms of but do most of your sales and most of your tour like the big stuff. Comes from all, literally all over the world. Yeah, yeah, that's so, beautiful. It's yeah. really spread out. Like all, I'm, when I mean everywhere, it's like everywhere. Yeah, when you text them, where are you? Jerusalem. Where are you? <laughs> Jerusalem. Like nigga, we get it. Okay, <laughs> you're, you're, you're you're big. You're a big deal. I'm oh, sorry, not you're big. You're a big deal. <laughs> you be like, bro. You be like, it sounds like you be thinking I'm lying. Sometimes. No, I, I I know. It's like funny. Like sometimes I just text you out the blue to see. It's sort of like, where's Waldo? Where's Jason? <laughs> 
All right, well, listen, uh, last question I ask is, what is the biggest misperception you think people have of you? Hmm. Hmm. That's deep. Um... I think the biggest misconception probably is um, people don't know like my my upbringing. They don't know my background. So I'm from a place called Carroll City, and it's a it's a hey. mm-hmm. it's a it's a inner city. Um, when we grew up there, it was very it was like one of the poor poorer neighborhoods in Miami. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, one of the the worst neighborhoods in Miami. Um, so I think a misconception is probably people think that I'm from. You know, like this, this Calabasas, high, Silver yeah, Spoon Kid, yeah, yeah, this high class Thanks. family where mm-hmm. I just kind of got everything handed to me. Bourbon mm-hmm. Kid. No, I came out of the trenches, mm-hmm. and I, I feel like I saved my life, but I not only saved my life, I saved my family's life. Um, and I would love for my for my story to be an inspiration for for the kids that were like me. You know what I'm saying? And that you don't have to take the same path that everybody takes. I think far too often what's in our faces all the time is, uh, you know, having to go to jail or having to, um, you know, do lean or, like, do do drugs and, like, uh, sell drugs. And that, that shit is, like, the cool thing to do. Um, I would love for, for my story to be an example of, of a different path. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? And... <clears throat> I wish people would know the benefits and the the reward behind it without me having to flash it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because if I flash my money against all of these rappers' money, it, they would hold no candle. You know what I'm saying? So like, light flex. Wait, this the shade I love. You know, but it's re- it's real though. It's so real. Yeah. It's it's so real. Uh, your favorite artist. Their checkbook against my checkbook. Well, I told you about the one a celebrity whose credit card didn't work in the club. We ain't gonna say no names today. Though. <laughs> <laughs> but that's but but I think that's the biggest misconception is is um is is where I'm from. Mm-hmm. Hey. Well, listen, I I appreciate that you're becoming more transparent, and I would say you know yesterday we did the whole little live thing. I, I went live on Hollywood Unlocked and you know, uh, put you on the live and then you went live. I mean, I I know like you have crazy rabid fans who love you and love everything you put out. But I, I think it's great that you're starting to share more of yourself. Okay, good. That's good. And you'll include us in whatever else you're doing moving forward. We support you. I mean, Hollywood will not fuck with you. Likewise. Yeah, bro. And um, send Alyssa your penis pic before you post it next time because <laughs> we should break the internet on our platform. <laughs> that will just help us with subscribers, you know? <laughs> Anyway, uh, well, thank you for coming up here, uh, and appreciate we appreciate y'all. you. And um, gargling on balls. No, stop it. I Just... can't believe you said that <laughs> live in a room full of people. What? And like the back of your throat. Are you throat. fucking kidding me? I this can't. is Hollywood Unlocked. Right. Okay. Mm. All right. Th- well, this, wait, wait, wait. This from the guy that used to fucking that... try to barter my fucking vagina like right. every episode. Right. That was her reminder for me to try it one more time <laughs> here no. today. No. And New Year, new me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do it. No. I'll give you her number after the show. Bye, no. everybody. Peace. Bye, everybody.